based on what Juan shared with me about the girl in Canada and the stuff that I kind of heard after the fact, I have many reasons to believe what he's telling me. Yeah. I know that there were a lot of doubts within the group about his story at the start of the season. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Reunion Part 1. And before we get started, let me just say this. Right out the gate, this first part was infuriating to watch. I felt like I was being gaslit as a viewer. You have Giselle changing her story about what she said about Chris Bassett all last season. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes, don't you worry. But the amount of gaslighting, the insanity of it all, people not owning anything, Candace, you lost steam in this argument. It hurt my heart to watch. I got secondhand embarrassment when you brought those huge poster boards out to make your point. I was just like, once and for all, can we please, as a collective, let's leave the props at home? Because I'm sorry to say, but the props don't give what y'all think they're supposed to have gave in the words of Rolling Ray. I just wanted you to get your point out succinctly without all the theatrics. Let me just make it clear that if Bravo didn't want to fire both of the Green Eyed Bandits, they were better off firing Giselle over Robin. Because if I'm being honest, while Robin brings nothing, while she grates on my nerves, I can tolerate Robin a bit more than I can tolerate Giselle. And all throughout this first part, she demonstrated how nasty she truly is and how she is holding this group back severely. And the fact that she doesn't think that she's wrong, that's also very troubling. But with all that being said, and without further ado, let's just jump right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. Now, opening up this reunion, it was a bit different because usually, we always see Andy go into everybody's dressing rooms to see how they're feeling, asking how they're doing. And this year, he didn't do any of that. It shows that Andy is just as fed up as we are. So we see everybody arrive on the stage. And I will say this, everybody looked great. These were definitely Potomac's best reunion looks to date. I think that Karen stole the show. Karen got tens across the board, flawless. Now, it's apparent that Giselle felt a type of way about being in the second seat because she even commented like, oh, who's sitting there to Andy when she came out first? Because again, she's not used to being second seat. She's always been in the first seat. It's evident that she was a bit shook about that because all throughout this reunion, she was really trying to perform. She was definitely showing out in ways that we've yet to see in any of the other reunions. She's usually kind of quiet. But this time around, she had a whole lot to say. She was activated. I said, I'm sure you are activated because you want to make sure that you have your spot for season nine. I thought it was interesting when Andy went around to greet all the women and he went on to ask NECA how would she rate her first season on this show. And she said that she would give it a 10 out of 10. Now, I don't believe that. I think that NECA only said that to save face and she's trying to kiss up because she wants to come back for season nine. Now, I told you guys in my live last week that somebody who's on the inside gives me some tea here and there. And they told me that NECA will most likely be back for season nine because she wants to have her redemption arc. And Bravo wants to give her one last chance to see if the viewers can come around to her. Now, NECA, a little tip from me to you, if you are back for next season, be yourself. Give us your real life, your real story, be authentic, have some personality, and you might actually do a lot better than you did this last season. You can definitely tell that Andy was not pleased by this season, and he's irritated by the backlash, the think pieces, and then you have the drop in ratings. He's not pleased because he starts off this reunion by saying, I want to set an intention for this group for you guys to move forward, find forgiveness, but I'm not going to hold you. While I love this show, 
I was frustrated as a viewer watching how you guys could not find common ground because that's what this show is all about. Now, Karen, I like you and all, but the way I rolled my eyes when you said, I believe in these women and I feel like they can move forward and I expect nothing less tonight. I said, Karen, you can keep dreaming. You know how hateful Giselle and Robin are. So for you to even delude yourself into thinking that they're going to make peace with anybody in this group, that's a joke. So I just said, let's not be delusional now. I know you're the grand dame. I know that they all listen to you, but let's not get crazy and believe that everybody in this group is capable of being a decent human being and owning up to their wrongs. So now Candace jumps in and says that she's willing to take ownership where she needs to take it and she does want to move forward. So Wendy and Mia say, count me in. Of course, Giselle and Robin aren't saying anything. Karen turns to both of them and she's like, okay, so what about you guys? So Robin's like, yeah, sure, I guess. And all Giselle says is looking forward to ownership. Of course, Giselle's not talking about herself taking ownership. She means she wants everybody else to take ownership, even though she's the one who's done people wrong, i.e. Wendy and Candace. And he's starting it off with the whole sex portion, how it's the only time they're able to get along when they're talking about sex. Now, when Andy read that viewer question asking Karen, why did she pause when they had asked her on the trip, how many sexual partners have you had in the last five years? And so Karen says, well, I pause because I count my wet dreams, that's why. So now you have Robin jumping in trying to be shady and she's like, you had to pause because you couldn't remember how many partners you've had. So when I tell you Karen was quick with it, she said, no, Robin, that's Juan. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, whack her again for me, Karen, please. I'ma just scoot on over and let you whack him. Get him again. Get him for me. Ah. Because I'll be damned if I have a woman who has low self-esteem, who is with a serial cheater, trying to read me about what's going on in my marriage. Robin, if I were you, I'd keep quiet. Now we do jump to Robin's segment, and honestly, they could have kept this. Andy went way too easy on Robin. Robin got to skate by like she always does. So Andy starts it off by asking Robin, if Juan has watched any of the season back and Robin says no. I said, of course he hasn't. So now Andy goes on to ask Robin if she knows for certain that Juan has never cheated on her with the Canadian woman, Coach Bree, or anybody else since they got back together. So here goes Robin making excuses, talking in circles, and she says, well, no, I can't say for certain about what Juan has done, but nobody in this group can say for certain about what their partner is doing. And yes, I'll give you that, Robin, because nobody knows 100% what their partner is going to do when they're not around them. But at the same time, I believe that you do know that Juan has stepped out since you guys have gotten remarried again, but you just don't want to say it. But she goes on to say that besides that, she does believe that Juan is telling the truth. And of course you do, Robin, because a desperate woman with low self-esteem and who's going to stand by her man to the bitter end, you choose to believe that he's telling you the truth when in fact he's giving you blatant lies and giving you his ass to kiss. And may I say this, when they played Robin's segment back, it was disturbing watching all the times when Juan was yelling at her on that phone. The fact that he doesn't have enough respect for his wife to talk to her in a respectful manner. It's very sad. And I was happy when Andy Lowkey called it out because he asked you, has Juan been supportive? And Robin's like, yeah, he's been really supportive. He was on the show this season, he filmed, we did talk about it. And Andy was like, well, that's nice and all, but where is he right now? Why isn't he here at this reunion? He doesn't have a basketball game to coach, so why couldn't he attend this reunion? And I loved how Wendy called you out and said, that's your man, that's your husband. He's supposed to be standing beside you so that you don't have to take all this BS and all these bullets by yourself. He doesn't know that you're going to be under fire not, tonight no. because of his actions. The no, least he not. can do as your husband no. is to stand behind you and say, baby, you don't have to take all the bullets. I can take some too. 
and all you could do was just sit there and look dumb because you know that it's true. It's just sad to see that you're allowing this man to treat you so poorly. You've been on this show for eight seasons and Juan has only shown up to what? I think one or two reunions. I want to say it was either the season two reunion or season three reunion. So that says a lot. When Andy asked Robin about that weird habit that Juan has where he empties out all of his DMs and messages and Robin made up that stupid excuse saying, oh, well, Juan has this weird thing about clutter, so that's why he cleans out his messages. So now Andy wants to know if Robin knows Juan's passcode. And Robin says, no, I don't know it, but he doesn't know my phone passcode either. Now, for all my married subscribers, would you mind doing me a favor and just answering down below? Do you think that is a bit problematic? if your husband or wife refuses to give you their passcode to their phone, I would think that that would be kind of strange. I would definitely have a side eye like, what are you hiding? Because when you're married, there shouldn't be any secrets, right? So I feel like that's a bit of a red flag if your husband or your wife is not giving you their passcode to their phone, they're a bit weird with their phone, they're deleting all these messages, I would feel like that's kind of strange and a bit alarming. But again, I'm not married yet, but for all my married folks, please let me know down in the comments if that isn't a red flag, because to me, that gives red flag energy. Just saying. So now we get into the whole Candace versus Robin mess, and Candace says, let me be clear. My issue was never about if Juan was cheating on Robin. My issue was you kept this info a secret when you demanded that everybody in this group share their lives. That was my issue. So now Robin jumps in and she's like, um, that's not true. Can you please provide some examples? So Candace says, last year when we were on vacation, you were sitting up there bugging Karen about Karen not being honest about her life. So Robin clears it up and she says, no, I said that after Karen accused Juan, of holding hands with this other woman in Georgetown. But other than that, I've never demanded that anybody share anything. Now, let me just stop for a minute. I saw some people on social media say that that wasn't a strong example and Candace was reaching. And while that might be so, the point still remains that Robin hid an entire storyline and did not bring it on the show. Say what you want, but the point of being on a reality show is to share your real life. I don't care how you slice it. I don't care who you are. I don't care who your fave is. The rules are the rules. It is unfair for any one of these women to hide a major issue going on in their lives and then hide behind a paywall to tell the story instead of telling it on the show. That's unacceptable. That was Candace's whole point. Now, Robin, I feel like it was at this point where Andy probably decided, let me go on and fire her because the answers that you gave just made no sense. When Andy asked you, don't you think it would have helped you out had you been up front and gotten ahead of the story? And you're sitting up there, well, uh, I mean, um, well, no, because I didn't want to get ahead of anything. Robin, if I were you, knowing that my job is on the line, knowing that this is one of the worst seasons you guys have ever had, knowing that ratings have dropped severely, don't you think it would have been in your best interest to say, you know what, Andy, you're right. Me and Juan were going through a tough time. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't know who to tell, but you're right. I was wrong. I should not have hid this storyline and I'm sorry about it. You would have had a better chance. They probably would have forgiven you and you might have saved your job had you just done that. But you doubling down and standing on business about why you didn't say anything and hid your whole entire storyline that's not a good look and that's probably a big reason why you got fired because that's a huge f you and a slap in the face to the network and your logic behind well i was expecting karen to reveal the story first that sounds so silly and one thing about karen karen is going to always let robin have it again and again and again and you're gonna always get it again and again and again because she brings up how in season three she brought up 
raise tax issues, she made sure to have that press conference to get ahead of the story. Now, say what you want, but Karen's press conference definitely goes down in the Hall of Fame of best episodes ever. That episode was everything. Karen was too done. They were all clowning her. You have Giselle and Robin coming in with those free Uncle Ben shirts. <laughs> That was when Giselle and Robin were actually likable and tolerable. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> and I also love how Karen does not fail to let you know that those were not her tax issues. Those were Ray's tax issues. She's like, don't put that on me. My money is very long over here. That was Raymond's issue, not mine. <laughs> So I, I'm thinking, no are you broke? Yeah, no money problems whatsoever. That's Tony Braxton. That's yeah. not me. Now, I watched the first part twice, right? I watched it on Sunday night, and then I watched it the next day on Peacock, the extended and uncensored version. So hearing Karen say the F word and them not bleeping it out was perfection. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where things get messy. Andy reads a viewer question, and mind you, this viewer's name is bleeped out, and we find out why in just a few minutes. But Andy reads the viewer question, and it says something to the effect of, how come Candace is angry that Robin didn't share but when she got on this show in season three, she stated that her and Chris Bassett had the right to choose what they show to share. Now, while that is a valid question, let me just say that throughout Candace's time on this show, she has bared her soul and she has shared everything. We've seen the very complicated dynamic that she has with her mother. We've seen the issues with her and Chris, the whole topic of her wanting to have a child. We've seen all the issues that she's had with the other ladies on this cast. So that doesn't really hold up when Candace has shared her life. Whereas in Robin's case, Robin has gotten away season after season after season with giving us little to nothing. Candace makes it clear that she's not answering that question from that particular person. She says that that's Robin's friend who happens to be a blogger that Robin feeds info to. So Candace accuses Robin of being in a group chat with this friend slash blogger of hers and she's talked badly about Giselle to this blogger. Candace, like I said in the beginning, leave the props at home. When you turned around to pull out that poster board, I said, you have got to be kidding me. Now, the poster boards are blurred out, but according to Candace, that poster board shows that Robin and the blogger were having a conversation about Giselle how Robin was angry when Giselle said in one episode earlier on in this season that Juan had yelled at her. And so Robin, I guess, was upset about that. And that's what Candace is showing. So you have Robin saying, I mean, okay, like me and Giselle talk. Giselle's like, am I supposed to be mad at that? Because I'm not. She's more mad about it than I am. And I'm the one who is being talked about. I was just like, oh. I said, Candace, girl, again, this poster board did not do what you thought it was supposed to do, girl. It was just a complete flop. One thing about Robin and Giselle, they are like this. They keep a united front no matter what. If they're angry at each other, we're not going to ever know about it. Giselle could have been hotter than fish grease, but she would never let Candace or anybody else know. Candace, you could have showed these receipts on your phone. Again, these poster boards fell flat. It just wasn't it. Now, I do feel like Andy could have pressed Robin on that a bit more. Like, Robin, why are you talking to bloggers and talking badly about your friend? But Andy changes gears and he goes on to ask Candace if she still feels like Robin was in cahoots with Giselle to malign Chris's name to protect Juan. So Candace says, yes, I still feel that way. Now, I can see why Candace would feel that way because remember, Last season, Robin was on Chris and Candace's side when this all happened. But remember at the reunion, Robin sort of changed her tune when she said, well, if we're being honest, no married man should be in a room alone with a single woman or a woman 
that's not his wife. And it was low key siding with Giselle and sort of implying that Chris might have had wrong intentions. So I could understand why Candace was upset. Like, damn girl, are you turning on me and my husband too? But do I believe that Robin was in cahoots with Giselle about that whole scheme? Trying to malign Chris Bassett? No. I think that was a Giselle and Ashley scheme. Candace goes on to say that Robin knew that talking about her husband, she'd be able to sweep all of her issues under the rug with Juan. So here's where Candace pretty much took another L, in my opinion. Andy goes on to ask Candace, what does she need from Robin in order to move forward? Before Candace can even answer, Candace starts asking for a Kleenex because she's about to cry. And we see Giselle taunting her and she's like, oh my gosh, not tears, not tears. And Giselle is laughing like a maniac. I mean, she is really going in on Candace. I do. <laughs> you. Come on. Tears, tears, okay, tears, come on. tears. Candace is like, F you, Giselle. She's cursing her out. Giselle's still taunting her about her crying. I'm like, damn. I said, Candace, from one sensitive girl to the other, I'm a crier. I will sob like that. But one thing about me, though, when it comes to dealing with your ops, there is no time to start crying because I'll be damned if I have my ops get one over on me. It's not happening, not in this lifetime or the next. I can hold the tears back to get my point out. And I felt like Candace was losing traction when she started crying. And it sucked because they were just so busy taunting her that Candace couldn't even get her point out. I was just like, oh my gosh. I saw all the Candace haters reveling in the fact that Giselle ate Candace up. Now, I wouldn't say that mocking somebody and saying tears, not tears, I wouldn't call that you eating somebody up because Giselle has never been a reader. Yeah, she got her moment where she got the best of Candace, but I wouldn't say that she ate her up because there were no reads. Taunting somebody about crying is not reading them. But yeah, I will say that in that moment, Candace did take the L because she failed to get her point across. So now Candace says that all she wanted from her friend was acknowledgement. Acknowledgement that there was a difference. But Robin states that she wants nothing from Candace other than an apology. Because if she really believes that she was in cahoots to malign Chris's name, then Candace should stay away from her. Because why do you want to be friends with somebody who thinks that about you? It's a sad day when you have Mia trying to play peacemaker. She jumps in saying, I think the issue is Robin wants Candace to be accountable and Candace wants Robin to be transparent. And he's like, look, we're obviously not getting that from either one of them. Let's just move on. And I said, please, because I'm tired. Now I did watch the extended and uncensored version on Peacock and we see Andy asking Robin if Juan has found another job. So Robin says, no, he hasn't found anything, but he has been volunteering at our oldest son's high school. So we find out that Juan has been coaching the basketball team and they actually won their first championship. So we close out Robin's segment with Andy asking her if she wants to say anything else to the viewers about her marriage. So Robin says that her and Juan have been in each other's lives for the last 28 years and you go through ups and downs and you go through thick and thin and she's willing to thug it out with this man. I said the number one telltale sign of a pick me talking about being a ride or die or thugging it out with a man. I'm not thugging it out with any man. No. Uh -uh. And for you to say that at your big age, talk about, oh yeah, I'll thug it out. Are you serious? What are you saying here? And then Robin saying that they're locked in and they're in it for the long haul and they love their family. I said, girl, if you like it, I love it. Robin is a proud pick me and who am I to get all upset about it? And I'm just curious to see how Juan treats you now since you're out of a job. You're no longer on this show anymore. 
So that's going to be very interesting to see how that dynamic is. Well, I guess we won't see it because you're going to be off the show. You didn't show us anything else when you were on here, but I digress. But I feel like they could have kept Robin's segment because Robin's segment was pretty much all about Candace. And it also felt like Karen's segment turned into the whole let's get on Candace because we jump over to Karen. And of course, Andy starts off with the soft questions. He's asking her if she got work done. And Karen admits that she did get a facelift. That's why she looks so refreshed. I did think it was funny when Ashley was like, oh, did you also get your body done too? And Karen says, oh no, girl, the body is all me, it's banging. <laughs> she was like, Ashley, don't even try it. And one thing about Miss Karen, Karen's body has always been snatched since season one, always. Did you notice that throughout this first part, Ashley would try to interject? And it's like, girl, nobody's talking to you. Just sit at the end of the couch and be quiet, please. Shut up. We don't want to hear anything out of your mouth, please. Andy brings up Karen's tagline, how she's a fence sitter. What does that actually mean? And Karen says, listen, most times in this group, I am Switzerland. When I see two wrongs, I try to make it right. And I'm doing the Lord's work. Candace and Wendy do think that Karen is a fence sitter, but they also state that while that's true, Karen does not change who she is around any of them. Andy brings up Karen's PAVE event that she had earlier in the season. And he says that we got a lot of positive feedback from the viewers when that episode aired. So now he wants to know from Karen, did she know that so many of the women in this group had also experienced? So Karen says that she had some idea, but she's proud of everybody in this group for sharing their stories. Now remember the episode of Karen's PAVE event, Mia had shared at the end about what had happened to her and how she believed that Jacqueline knew and didn't say anything to anybody and she had held on to a grudge against Jacqueline. So we have Andy ask Mia, where do Mia and Jacqueline stand now? And Mia says, we're actually great. We're closer than ever. So now Andy changes gears and he brings up the death threats that Giselle has received due to Giselle's claims that it's Candace's fault. And he wants to know if Giselle ever thought about addressing it with Candace during the season. Now, the first thought in my mind was, why are we switching over to Giselle and Candace's issues when we're talking about what's going on with Karen? Again, I felt like there was so much focus on Candace. Let's blame Candace for something when we're talking about the other women. It was just really weird. But anyhow, Giselle says, no, I didn't because I was told that she would be talked to. Now, we're all smart people. We can all read between the lines of what Giselle is saying. Giselle is basically saying she talked to the higher ups at Bravo and she assumed that Candace would be dealt with. Like how Karen went to HR to get Candace fired after season five, that's probably what Giselle did. But Giselle, all the nasty things that you've said and done to people, it's really hilarious that you feel like Candace would be talked to about her actions when her actions have been in response to what you've done to her. But again, I digress. The gaslighting throughout this first part was outrageous. Candace is irate. She's like, how am I being blamed for people sending you death threats? That's not my fault. I have nothing to do with that. And I agree with that. Giselle getting death threats has nothing to do with Candace. And let me just clear the air. Despite how I feel about a housewife, nobody deserves to be getting death threats. Period. End of story. They all deserve to be safe, to be out of harm's way. They don't deserve to be dealing with harassment from viewers haters, trolls, that's not fair to anybody. Now, Giselle, I hope that you are seated because I'm about to read you down. How dare you say the color of my skin is what caused people to say you're a colorist and I'm coming to kill you and your children. Let's pause. Your actions are why people are calling you a colorist. What don't you get? What's not clicking? Your actions throughout the seasons have demonstrated colorism. What aren't you getting? I don't understand it. For you to try and blame Candace, that Candace is the one who has put it in people's heads that you're a colorist, that's not true. 
People were calling you colorist in the earlier seasons before Candace even joined this show. Let's not forget how you treated Monique when Monique came on in season two. The cries about you being colorist got louder as the seasons progressed, mainly seasons five through present day. But how dare you try to pin this on Candace like she's the one to blame for what's happening to you. Yes, it's sad you don't deserve to be getting death threats, Neither do your children, but what you won't do is act like this is Candace's fault. It's not. You're reaching. I loved how Candace said, again, everybody on this show has received some sort of death threats. Let's not forget season five, Monique's fans were harassing Candace, sending her death threats. So let's not act like this is the first time that anybody has received threats. I see why Candace left. It was at this portion that I said, okay, I get it. She couldn't take it anymore. The gaslighting is just in your face. They make you feel like you're crazy. And it's clear that Giselle is not going to back down. She's not going to apologize or own up to her wrongdoing and she's going to spin the narrative that Candace is wrong and she does not care. And that would make even the strongest person say, you know what, I'm out of here. I can't do this anymore. And I get it. Candace, protect your peace. I'm glad that you quit this show because it's too toxic. And I was pissed off when Andy was even trying to low key blame Candace for these death threats because he was like, well, are you liking tweets about Giselle? And she was like, well, I mean, some of them. So we see a screenshot of this tweet that says, break it down, sound it out. Candace is a dark skinned woman and Giselle is a light skinned woman. And all Candace was saying was that Giselle's proximity to whiteness gives her privilege. That was it. Candace liked that tweet. Now, that's not a threat. That's not saying anything bad. That's just stating a fact about colorism and how it works. That's all that was. So for Giselle and Andy and Robin to act as if Candace is inciting violence by liking tweets that are educating folks on colorism, that's a reach. And again, it's really proving people's points that they really are out to get Candace. Whatever Candace says or does is a problem. And Andy, it does feel like you don't like Candace because the way you treat Candace versus how you treat other people on this cast, it definitely feels like you don't like her. And I have to call a spade a spade. And it was upsetting to hear you say, well, it does involve you then when you're liking tweets like that. No, it does not involve her because that tweet did not say anything that was derogatory. It was not inciting violence. So no, that's not, we're not gonna do that. I, I feel emotionally spent. And I think that this is going to be the last season that I watch and review because I'm not going to keep doing this. Candace says, well, it's no different than you bringing up my husband on your podcast so you have Giselle talking about, well, we only talked about you and your husband one time on our podcast because it was in the blogs. So now you have Robin jumping in like she always does because God forbid Giselle stand alone and fight her own battles. So Robin's like, oh, so those screenshots are Photoshopped then? So Candace is like, wait, what are you talking about? What screenshots? And Robin's like, you know, the screenshots of your husband's limp penis. I said, Robin, you really thought you ate that, didn't you? It was proven to be a lie. That woman who got up there on Tasha Kay's show saying that she slept with Chris Bassett, that was a lie. The woman even retracted her statement saying, I lied. And for you to repeat a lie on national television to make Candace look bad says a lot about you and your character. And the fact that Robin was still trying to say no, but she retracted her statement, it's like, you're so pathetic. I understand you don't like Candace, but the fact that you have that much hate in your heart where you wanna repeat a lie. You know it's a lie. And I'm sure you do wanna believe that Chris is cheating on Candace because Juan cheats on you. Misery loves company. You're so upset that she actually has a man who respects her and loves her. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, your man is cursing you out. And then on top of that, probably out and about with his alleged girlfriends, paying for hotel rooms. But you're okay with that because you believe in standing by your man, your man, your man, and thugging it out and being a ride or die, like the pick me that you are. But just because you're desperate, sis, everybody else isn't. 
So don't project your issues onto Candace and Chris. And two points for NECA because she even jumps in and says, that woman has no credibility whatsoever. I said, thank you. I was more and more disgusted as the reunion went on because this whole Giselle versus Candace argument, I was tapped out. Like I was emotionally spent just watching this because talking to Giselle is like talking to a brick wall. She is not trying to listen to understand. She wants to believe that she's a victim and that she's right. So there's nothing that's going to get through her head. But Andy points out that they're about to go on break in the next 15 minutes and he wants to see if it's possible for Candace and Giselle to move forward. Candace says Giselle has shown through her words and her actions that she has no desire to move forward. So I don't want to hear anything else from her. I forgot what Giselle said. She gave some BS response back. I said, okay, girl. I said, oh my gosh, you just refuse to own anything. I mean, my God, like what is going on? But Andy's exhausted. He wants to know, is there anything that either one of them can just admit where they were wrong? So Giselle says, well, last season it was brought to my attention that her and Chris were both angry when I made that sneaky link comment and I apologize for that. Andy reads a viewer question addressing Candace about Candace's tweet after the PAVE event episode aired where Candace tweeted something like, it's triggering watching a woman who accused somebody of SA discuss SA. And the viewer goes on to say that she thought it was really sad that Candace turned a powerful moment about herself and about the issues that she has with Giselle, even though Giselle never accused Chris of SA. So Candace says the word choices that she used, saying that he made me go into the room. So now you have Andy interject and he's like, Wendy, in a court of law, would this hold up? So of course you have Giselle being smug and she's like, um, Andy, NECA is the lawyer. So Wendy was tight. Wendy was like, and Andy is the host. And he asked me a question. I said, get her. I said, now I know that NECA is the lawyer in this group, but Giselle, you just can't help yourself. You wanted to get a rise out of Wendy by saying, um, NECA's the lawyer. Again, the hate just always jumps out when it comes to Giselle. Like she, she just can't help herself. She literally gets off on trying to embarrass Candace or Wendy at any given moment. So NECA says, no, this wouldn't stand in court. And now you have Mia saying, Candace, I don't think that this situation equals SA. So now you have Candace saying, well, no, because she said out of her mouth that my husband forced her to go into a room. I liked how Karen jumped in and said, look, we need to wrap this topic up because we have a lot of viewers who are victims and we need to be respectful of them. And I said, exactly. So of course we have Giselle saying that I never used the words Lord or force. I never said that. Karen says at the end of the day, the words at play, we need to be careful because words are powerful. There are heavy implications using certain words and terms and the words that you use could be left up to anybody's interpretation. And Giselle was purposely being dense. She says, well, the conclusion is he did ask me to go back to his room. I was just like, oh my gosh. I said, Andy, if you don't step in and play the tapes back because Giselle is changing her story yet again. She said last season, that she felt uncomfortable because Chris had forced her or he made her go into a room. She said that. And it just felt like Andy was just letting Giselle lie her way out of what she said all last season. And when you say things like that, you are implying that there were some ulterior motives at play and that Chris was some sort of sexual deviant. And I appreciated when NECA stepped in and said, but Giselle, can you just clear it up for everybody? Just say, Chris did not try to SA you. And Giselle still couldn't say that. She goes on to say, what I said was, Chris asked me to go into a room and I felt uncomfortable. I said, oh my gosh. Candace jumps in and says, that's not what you said. You said that my husband made you go into a room. So Giselle's like, I'm not apologizing for words that I didn't say. And I said, Giselle, this is absolute bullshit. Excuse my French, but I was livid. My blood was boiling because last season, 
Giselle Bryant said out of her mouth that that man made her go into a dressing room and she felt uncomfortable. She said that. And Andy, I don't know why it took you so long to play those tapes back. You have Karen jumping in and thank God for Karen because Karen goes on to ask Candace, Candace, are you referring to that confessional where Giselle said he made me go into the room? Candace says yes. So you have Giselle denying it. They finally play the tapes back of last season. We hear out of our own two ears. Giselle says, he made me go into the room. Giselle, for you to still deny it when we have it on tape. I said, you know what? I have washed my hands of this show because in my mind, I feel like Giselle should have been terminated after last season when she lied on Chris Bassett. Those are serious allegations. And the fact that Chris lost so many jobs and opportunities because of that, Lord knows what his kids went through. His own family questioned him. And the fact that Giselle Bryant is still on this show causing all sorts of hell. It makes no sense to me. And Andy, I have to get on you again because I don't understand why you did not get on Giselle and say, Giselle, why did you say that? We see it on the tape, clear as day. You said out of your own mouth, he made me. And Giselle, how dare you try to turn this around and say, well, what about all the things that you said to me? I was just like, wait, what? You're the one who lied on her husband. You made serious damaging allegations against this man. Candace had every right to get in your ass for what you did. And the fact that you don't have any remorse for what you said. It's like you have no soul because I'm just not understanding how you feel like you're in the right with all this. I was honestly upset that Andy even brought this all up again. Did you honestly expect that Giselle Bryant would actually apologize for what she did? This was a waste of everybody's time. So since we're not getting anywhere, Wendy interjects and she says, Candace, let's just stop right here. Are you willing to take any accountability on your end? If Giselle were to apologize to you right now, are you willing to say, I own up to this, I'm sorry for that? She's like, full stop. So Candace says that she does apologize for the words that she used in the last reunion when she called Giselle white looking. She says, I do apologize for that. And then she goes on to say that she is sorry for the threats that her children have received because they don't deserve that. So Giselle holds herself accountable and it was like pulling teeth, but she says, well, let me just say this. Chris asked me, he did not make me. And Candace says that she accepts that. So you have Ashley saying, well, look at that. That's a starting point. That's some progress. Mia was just like, girl, that is not a win. So don't start. I said, exactly. It was pulling teeth to get Giselle to own up to anything. The, what she did own up to, she could barely do that. But I guess it's something. I guess something is better than nothing. And it wasn't a win because if you notice, when Candace was saying what she was sorry for and what she owned up to, Giselle didn't even receive it. I was just like, okay, girl, like you just don't want to be happy. You don't want to accept anything. You just hate Candace so badly that even when she does take ownership, you can't even receive it. It's like, I just, I... let me calm down. It's just a show. I refuse to get worked up. I really do and we're at the tail end of things. And he's like, okay, let's stop there. Then he says, Karen, I do want to circle back to you. Even though you are neutral, you do get on Robin a lot. So he's like, can either one of you guys say three nice things about each other? So Robin says, well, I do think that Karen is witty. She looks great for her age and she is a great mother. So now it's Karen's turn and Karen says, well, Robin is a great friend to Giselle. They were all like, girl, the shade of it all. Then she says that Robin is very intelligent. And the third thing is Robin is very strategic with her woe is me tears. And I said, I already knew that Karen was going to shade Robin. I knew that she would not name three nice things about her. She gave her one out of three. <laughs> And of course, Robin was angry at that. They start going back and forth. Robin says, that's the thing. When it comes to me, you just can't be objective. 
So Karen's like, girl, one minute you have a boom box on the table trying to expose somebody. And then of course, Robin jumps in. I was just like, you know what? I'm so done with all this. Can we please move on? So now it's time for their 15 minute break. They're in their dressing rooms. And when I tell y'all, I screamed. We see Mia in her dressing room. Gordon's there as well. And Mia is on FaceTime with her new boyfriend, Ink. So she's just like, oh, babe, I miss you. They're flirting. All of a sudden, you hear Mia talking about, oh, yeah, Gordon's right here. So Gordon's like, hey, man, how you doing? I said, girl, what? <laughs> I said, Mia might be many things, but one thing about it, she has these men sprung because you have your husband saying hey to your boyfriend. <laughs> So now they're back on the stage and we close it out with Mia's segment. Honestly, Mia's segment had me intrigued. So I wanted to hear more about that. I was like, damn, we have to wait until part two to hear about all the mess between her, Gordon and Ink. But anyhow, Andy starts asking Mia, where is she living right now? Mia says that she's in a penthouse in DC. And then we find out that Gordon is in Charlotte right now but he actually has plans to move back to DC and he's going to move into a condo across the street from Mia. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I don't know if I want my ex-husband to be across the street, but if Mia likes it, then whatever. <laughs> we find out more about Mr. Ink. They were high school sweethearts, went to prom together. We see this throwback picture of them. And then we find out that after high school, Ink had moved to Atlanta. They had lost touch because she wasn't trying to move to Atlanta with him. So Mia says that they kept in touch here and there. And now we have Wendy jumping in and Wendy's like, Mia, may I tell you this? Full disclosure, I just wanna be honest, but Gordon is going around telling people that Ink came to your house one day and he tried to get Jeremiah because he said that Jeremiah is his son. And we end the first part with Mia confirming that what Wendy said was true, that Ink does think that Jeremiah is his son. I just said, damn. The fact that we are really discussing this child's paternity issues on national TV like this is shameful. And Mia, don't you have any pride or respect for your family? Because why even drag your kids into this? It's one thing to talk about you cheating and having an open marriage, but to bring your children's business into all this is just not right. But guys, this first part had my blood boiling, a hot raggedy mess. It was hard watching my girl Candace take an L, be embarrassed the way she was with those poster boards as props and then you know, Giselle laughing at her. It was hard to watch. And it was also difficult to watch Giselle being able to get away with her evil ways. I just don't understand how somebody who can lie and make serious and damaging allegations about somebody's husband, how is that acceptable? I'm going to get the biggest bottle of champagne when we are officially done. When that last part comes on, I'm going to be rejoicing. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I cannot wait to put season eight to bed. But guys, that was my recap. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Bye.